All right. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Awesome. Lively audience. Wow. Yeah. Y'all get lunch? OK. All right. I'm Michael Rogers. I'm going to talk about Node.js. Uh, I hope that's what you came for. Uh, so Node is the fastest growing open source platform in the world. Uh, it is the ecosystem just blowing up. Um, I give a lot of talks about Node's growth. The short answer is it's, it's up. It's always just up. Um, so right now, the ecosystem is more than twice the size of the next competitor, which is Java. Um, it's more than twice as big as any other open source ecosystem. We're closing in on a half a million modules pretty soon. That'll be cool. Um, every day, 500 new packages are published to NPM, which is crazy. Like, a lot of them are useless, but some of them are very useful. Um, and if, you're, if you have an idea and you want to go and implement it, you don't have to implement all of the crazy infrastructure below that, because literally five people already published different versions of it, most of them just the same version wrapped in promises. Um, so <laughs> Node has about uh, 7 million users right now. That's, that's our current estimate. Um, and we're growing at about 100% year over year. Uh, we've been growing at 100% year over year for almost five years now. So this is really, really consistent growth. At some point, we have to cap out. Like, we're running out of the entire developer market. Um, but there's no reason to, know that, to think that this year we won't double again, and that this time next year uh, at Build, we'll be at about 14 million users. So when we were trying to figure out like where is all this growth coming from, like what are people doing with Node, why are they picking Node, um, we, we sort of figured out that there's this new full stack emerging for applications. It's, it's not just a front end and a back end anymore. There's a lot of environments that developers have to grapple with to build a full application. So of course, like, you still have web front ends. People use websites. Uh, you still have a cloud backend like normal, like, like we've had for forever. But we also have mobile and tablets. Uh, we're also now dealing still with desktop applications. I mean, if you, if you work on anything that people use every day and you have a desktop application, you know that engagement is actually a lot higher on desktop, surprisingly. Um, we have all these new API service layers that you use. Pretty much virtually every application out there now that gets released also uses some third-party API service, usually Twilio. Um, and then if this wasn't complicated enough uh, for all of us to try and grapple with building an application, we have like a million IoT devices uh, that are all wildly incompatible and horribly insecure. Um, so in order to deal with this, Node is kind of the perfect platform. Like we, we bring the web and we bring accessibility um, and we bring really ubiquity of the web platform and of JavaScript to all these different areas. So you actually can use Node in a variety of different places among a, among a relatively small team. So let's walk through some of that real quick. So web front end development. So web front end development has changed really dramatically um, since I started doing web development like 15 years ago, 20 years ago. God, I'm old. Uh, OK, so <laughs> we started building all these great tools in Node.js and JavaScript to help you build applications. Um, Babel for transpiling. We have linters. We have hinters, because there's a difference. Uh, we have DSLs for CSS. We have all these great tools to help you build out these front ends. In fact, we have so many tools that we wrote tools to manage all the tools that you have in Node.js to help you with your application, uh, which is crazy. But now, and then you have competing tools to manage all the tools. Um, and then a shift happened in front end development that I, I really didn't see coming, which is that um, web frameworks for the longest time have been this thing that you put in a script tag at the top of your site. and then. In the rest of the site, you use that API. It's accessible to you. But then React came along, and it sort of re it thought about a web framework very, very differently. It started to consider that maybe where a web framework should exist is in this compile chain, where we have access to Node.js and this entire ecosystem. And this is like really a binary shift. Like, I don't think that we're going to see a lot of web frameworks in the future written the old way. There's just so much that you have access to now in Node.js to help you build out all these tools. Um, now, one of the nice things about being at Microsoft is that there's going to be examples throughout the entire stack that Microsoft is actually invested in, which is kind of fun. So TypeScript is one of these examples. Microsoft is leading TypeScript. They're heavily invested in it. Um, we've been arguing for years about putting types in the language. Uh, and then Microsoft said, ah, we can add types just on top with a compile chain. And it turns out that this is actually kind of preferable. I mean, I know that a lot of people would still like to see it in the language, but there are things that we can do with this as a compile chain and as a tool that you can't actually do if it's just in the language itself, which has been really fun to watch. And so TypeScript's uh, adoption is really growing pretty fast. OK, so let's move along to the next area. Uh, we're going to talk about mobile a little bit. So uh, Apache Cordova used to be called PhoneGap. 
and then they were getting sued by the Gap, I think, for <laughs> trademark infringement, which is hilarious. Uh, so when they went into Apache, they changed their name to Cordova, because that's really easy to remember. Um, and Cordova just brings the entire web platform to iOS, to Windows Phone, to Android, right? And it does this using JavaScript, using Node. Like, it's a Node tool chain. It brings the entire Node ecosystem. So now you get the Node ecosystem and all of the web platform across all these different devices for ostensibly, like, native applications, right? Um, which is great. It works great on Windows Phone. They've invested heavily in that. It's awesome. OK, so I thought desktop was dead. I thought that we, everything was a website now, but that's not true. Uh, we, people actually really do want to build desktop applications. So GitHub built this great project called Electron. What Electron does is using the Node ecosystem, it brings the web platform and the entire Node ecosystem to desktop development for OS X, for Linux, and for Windows, of course. Um, the effect has been huge. Like, there's just been an explosion in desktop applications using Electron. Uh, everything from Slack to my favorite, Visual Studio Code. If, this is one of those things where like, if I had a time machine, I would never be able to convince my future self that I'd be using Visual Studio in the future. Like, that just wouldn't ever happen. Um, but I've been on this editor for a couple of years now. It's phenomenal. Like, all of the features that people had in IDEs that I wanted, but I didn't want a giant IDE for, it has. It's great. Entirely built on Electron, using Node.js, using the web platform. Um, so, and all of your applications, if you build a web application, can really be easily ported into a desktop application using this entire Node ecosystem, right? Mm. All right, moving along, um, the cloud. So Node was built for cloud services. It's always had a great cloud service story. Virtually every cloud provider sees a lot of Node adoption right now. They have pretty good Node support. Um, we, we do very well here. Um, but. I want to talk a little bit more about Azure specifically, because from the moment that Azure was released, they were talking to us in the Node.js community about how do we make sure that this experience is really good. This is something that's been thought about since day one. This isn't an afterthought. Um, and I know that you know, a lot of people, the way that they come to Azure is that they bring a lot of the tool chains that they've been using in the Windows platform into the cloud. Um, but it's really important to note that from day one, Azure has really taken Node seriously and has a great Node story, um, which we'll even talk a little bit more uh, when we come back to serverless again. IoT, because everybody wants a button to do everything. Um, OK, so starting in 2012, the Node ecosystem started to see a big rise in robots. Uh, there were robot meetups. The NodeBots community kind of blew up. Um, some of the people that used to work on jQuery started building a framework for building robots uh, called Johnny5. And it is almost as easy as using jQuery, but you build robots. It's awesome. Um, and so this kind of hobbyist community really grew uh, from, from 2012 on. And as IoT manufacturers started to bring new device platforms online, they started to support Node, at first kind of as an afterthought and then natively. So there's now like every new board that's coming out as an integrated circuit for people's IoT devices, you're seeing like first class Node support in every single one of them because they know that the best way to bring application developers to their platform is to bring the entire Node ecosystem to their platform as well. Um, and so this has been really tremendous and not something that we really saw coming, you know, even as, as Late as like you know, 2014, we weren't really seeing this. Okay, so I'll talk a little bit specifically though about Windows 10 IoT because this is kind of cool. Um, most other IoT platforms, what they do is they port V8 over to whatever crazy architecture that their IoT platform is on. Microsoft didn't do that. They they already have Chakra running on these IoT devices. They're already optimizing Chakra for these IoT devices. Why not just port Node to Chakra? Crazy. Um, but they did it, and it works fantastic. Um, at first, what they did was they just emulated the entire V8 API, uh, V8 being the, the, the VM that Node is usually bound to. Um, that is going to be like impossible to maintain in the future, because V8 loves to break their API. Um, and so what Microsoft did was they, they really got involved in the Node community and started working with us on core. And what we started to move towards was, what would it look like for Node to be truly VM neutral? What would we need in the way? And so Microsoft, along with Google and Mozilla, have been working on a, native, a new native layer in Node.js that will separate it from being tightly bound to the V8 API. So even if you don't care about Node Chakra, even if you don't care about Windows IoT, this is a huge gift, actually, from the Microsoft team. Um, because every major release of Node, we break 30% of the packages in the Node ecosystem. And that's just because the V8 ABI breaks 
every major release. And so everybody has to at least go and recompile all of their native add-ons. It's a huge pain in the ass. Um, if any other feature or bug fix was going to land in Node and it was going to break 30% of the ecosystem, you'd never land that. But just because of the technical limitations that we've been living under so long, we've just dealt with this. Starting in Node version 8, which is coming out in like a month, um, we have now experimental support for this new native layer. Um, and this native layer is going to allow us to make real stability guarantees in the future ab about the native ecosystem. And so we won't be breaking these APIs in the future. And eventually, Node really will be truly VM neutral, which is fantastic. Um, and I really can't stress enough like how much Microsoft has led this effort uh, to get this in. It's been awesome. Um, OK, closing out, um, let's talk about APIs. So yeah, everybody uses APIs in the cloud now. Um, if you've built a, a new service uh, in the last couple of years, I'm sure that you've used some kind of third-party API for doing something. Like I said, Twilio text messages are like the main example. People love to do that. Uh, but literally everybody that puts up APIs sees this huge amount of growth. Um, and I'll mo I, I will go as far as to say most of these are actually written in Node. Um, but now we're also moving into this like serverless space where the, you actually build your application out of these discrete functions, right? They, they're branding it serverless, which is like the dumbest branding ever, but whatever. Um, I mean, there are servers. They exist. You're, you're running on them. But um, you're basically looking at these discrete functions that will, that will uh, run your application. You can build it out of these smaller dynamic components. So the cool thing about this is that every single one of these vendors that's come out with a solution has supported Node first. For a little while, some of them only supported Node. Um, and that's because Node is great for this kind of use case. For the longest time, we've been optimizing Node for running in a single process with a limited memory space and just doing a ton of I.O. Um, we've been optimizing like the startup performance because we just care about that in our development cycle. We want Node to start up quickly. Now it turns out that these are like the most important things for running in these cloud function services because you need a really fast startup time and you need to be really efficient in a really small space. I mean, Moore's Law is still making computers faster, but somehow we keep getting less and less of a slice of that computer to actually run our applications in. Um, <laughs> and so it's been great to see Node on these, including Azure Functions. Azure Functions have great support for Node.js. They just did a bunch of like new announcements like this week, I think, about all the new great uh, stuff going in for Node.js Azure Functions. So it's been really cool to see. So to wrap up, one of the things that I love about working with Node.js is that we're not just you know, making programming a little bit easier for people that already know programming. When Node comes into these spaces, it dramatically lowers the barrier to entry for new developers coming into the space and for new people learning. And when you start to tie all these together, it means that people that were not able to write IoT, like code for IoT devices before, now have access to that. And so we're really like democratizing access to build applications and making that more accessible for more people. Um, and by tying all of this together, we're now going to open up this huge future industry to a lot of new people. Um, and I love being a part of that, and I love like you know bringing the web to everybody, to more platforms, to all of you. Uh, I really wish that every vendor had a page like this. <laughs> so you can go to azure.com slash node, and you can see all the great things that you can use Node on on Azure. I really wish that like other local cloud vendors would do something similar to this. It would really help when we're doing talks like this. But this is fantastic. Uh, everybody go check it out. And that's known everywhere. Thank you. All right.